the follow-up to this, because I'm you know, talking about this creator stuff, Nintendo's creators program. This is such such bullshit. <laughs> I'm a little annoyed. Like, before you get into like just the details, I'm annoyed because I'm hyped for Splatoon right now. Like I am at like the peak of my hype levels for Splatoon, right? Yeah. Uh, and I'm looking forward to playing it. I was going I'm going to. I was I'm like this is the like now I'm like teetering a little bit. But I'm planning on buying a Wii U uh, for Splatoon, right? Like I'm strictly for that. Uh, but I want to create content. I want to do videos and that kind of stuff. Uh, but because of the Nintendo Creators Program, there's gonna be a ton of restrictions on how that needs to be handled. Uh, and you can go ahead and rant through them, uh, since I imagine you have them listed somewhere. What the the points, the bullet points? Yeah, like uh, what's required from the Nintendo's Creator Program? Uh, kind of. I I was going to give. Uh, hold on one second. Let me find this. Like that. Find this exact thing here. There's this. And then we have. Go, here it is. So here's here's the article that that I initially read on it um, from Polygon and the original source is in Nintendo. I don't want to sign in and read these details. Here here. here we go. So um, Nintendo's uh, creator's program is a service through which Nintendo gives you part of the advertising proceeds it receives from YouTube for your Nintendo-related YouTube videos. It's a little diagram. In the past, advertising proceeds that could be received for videos that included Nintendo copyrighted content, such as gameplay videos, went to Nintendo according to YouTube rules. Now, through this service, Nintendo will send you a share of these advertising proceeds for any YouTube videos or channels (coughs) containing Nintendo copyrighted content that you register. Uh... Then it goes through all of the the kind of uh, how to get started. Registration rules. Uh, you can register single videos or entire channels. Uh, when you register a channel, you, uh, you will be eligible to receive a share of advertising revenue from Nintendo for all videos included in that channel, regardless of their content. If you only want some videos to apply to this program, please register each video, uh, video individually. Uh, so... Look, there's a lot of wonkiness in this. Um, the The advertisement revenue share is 70% for channels and 60% for videos. Uh, and this says this rate may change arbitrarily. Uh, and in order to comply with applicable law, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's pretty much it. Payments are two months offset. That's pretty standard with things like Machinima or... Uh, some of the other networks out there, full screen, all those guys basically go back and they, 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 after you've accumulated two months worth of revenue for them, then you start to get your first payment. So, uh, look, here's, here's, I think PewDiePie probably said it the best. Um, and each developer is probably, um, you know, each developer and publisher has and is, is entitled to do whatever the hell they want with their game. The bad part about this is that from a content perspective, I think that a lot of publishers that aren't on board with this and don't get it necessarily are missing out on what a lot of uh, YouTubers say, hey, this is free advertisement for you. You would be crazy not to accept this free advertisement. And I feel like on some levels they're right. There were some arguments I saw saying, Nintendo is too big, especially for their IPs, to feel like that, you know, a YouTuber or a, you know, YouTube megastar is going to somehow, you know, push the sales uh, for their games. Now, someone like PewDiePie can definitely make a dent in those sales. He kept, for example, he kept Skate, was it three? In the top 10 
uh, most played games, I want to say, in the UK for like, um, this is like year seven years after the game released. After it was right? out, yeah. Seven, seven years? Like, then nobody plays that game. Like, nobody plays that game, right? So, saying that that game or, or someone like that w- would not have impact on your, on your game is crazy. Where it becomes, I think, really pivotal is if you have, let's say, a game like Call of Duty or uh, Minecraft. That's, those are two good ones, I think. Of. T- Team Fortress is another one, but they're on a smaller scale. So we use Team Fortress because I think they're more applicable to what Nintendo's audience would, size would be. A lot of those guys are content creators. From the development standpoint, of, we're going to mod stuff in-game. We're going to do all these types of things. And what that does is it keeps those core group of 50,000, 100,000, 200,000 people actively playing your game. If you get none of that from none of those people because you're not giving them a piece of the pie or you're being too greedy about it or you don't understand it, then those people aren't incentivized, I think, to continue doing it unless they are super passionate about it. But once they get a taste of that money, most people aren't going to go back, right? They, they will find what, they, they, <laughs> what their uh, uh, best avenue is to continue that money train. That's most people. Right. Not everybody. Sometimes you get those hardcore passionate fans. So what ends up happening is instead of that cycle of of continuing to uh, uh, infuse your community with content created by the community for the community, uh, you get kind of this drop off. And I think that ends up hurting uh, companies like Nintendo because they might get that initial spike. Sure. But when the DLC comes around and nobody's playing the game, you're probably not going to get that many people buying it. When you got an extra hero or whatever, you got a free to play game and you lose that initial hype because you don't have that community that's being reinforced to create content and be involved in the game, you lose out. So in situations where Nintendo, yeah, they might make some upfront sales, but if you don't have a community that's actively making content or producing things for your game, you lose out in the end. And so that is something that I feel like, uh, on some level, I think they don't understand. Now, Nintendo has pretty much just straight up made the program like a network. So I don't really see why it would be too offensive to too many people. Uh, but the one point that I think PewDiePie made is that, uh, and Jim Sterling reinforced it, is that they're not Nintendo's, those aren't Nintendo subscribers, right? Like. The 35,000 people that I have on my channel, um, those aren't those aren't Sony, those aren't uh, Nintendo, those aren't EA. Like I I put that together, right? So um, you know I think that they have to think uh, more strategically about how they want to perhaps uh, make make revenue off of off of that and be successful off of it. Uh, but that's the one point I think that probably reigns the the most uh, with with me. It's like hey. That, that makes sense, right? Um, the biggest thing to remember, though, is this is totally something that hasn't been backed up. People suggest that this is reality and the result of YouTubers, but all the statistics I've seen for click-through from YouTubers to game downloads suggest it's not really impactful. Oof. Uh, <laughs> uh, Pocket, that's... Uh, look, you're pretty strong. I, I think you're pretty strong opinionated on this one. Um... I could say from working at, at Edge of Reality and having a YouTube focused media campaign, that is absolutely false. Um, and uh, you know the sales for our game were completely and and uh, for sure driven by um, you know YouTubers. And I think that you're underestimating their power to actually uh, blow a game up. A good, another good example for at least someone, again, a PewDiePie scale is, um, uh, what is the name of that game? Fla- Flappy oh, Bird? Flappy Bird, yeah. Flappy Bird. So Flappy Bird was not on the radar. It was not on the radar. PewDiePie made one video, one video on Flappy Bird, and you see this gigantic spike in their sales. I'm talking like huge, huge spike in sales and then it rolled through and then you get all of the copycat games because one person put this this game on the map. So I, I'd say that the, the power of it is probably a little underestimated um, if you haven't been 
uh, I think, really involved in the community and seeing what it does for, for games. Uh, Minecraft is the other one that uh, I think a lot of people like to reference quite a bit. But uh, uh, I, I think click-throughs, especially for pe people that really focused on that campaign, I think you'd be kind of blown away by the results uh, if, 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 you've, if you've run those type of campaigns before, and I actually have. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think that, again, the publishers have the control, the developers have the control of their own IP titles, whatever. That may, that all makes sense. Um, I, I think if you're not fair about it and you try to be a little too greedy, and in this case, I think Nintendo is like, look, the, the percentages are kind of off, right? I think they're a little unfair. But 70% makes sense to me, but 60%, eh, you get on the side of like, that's a little too greedy for me. This is like 80%, I think, that uh, there wouldn't be people really up in arms about it. It doesn't, like, you won't get partner rates though, right? Like, you'll get, like, strictly the YouTube rate? Yes. So, like, for a lot of people, that 60% is really more like 40% it's really, or it 30%. Is, right. Like, those it top streamers support. are getting, like... Two to three, sometimes three to four dollars uh, per thousand. Um, where like the YouTube program is much less. Uh, so like you're taking that from the YouTube rate, which is already the very lowest rate that you can get on YouTube for the most like well definitively it is the lowest rate you can get on YouTube, and you're taking it down from there. Versus like a lot of people are with these partners or networks uh, that have larger or higher amounts. Uh, and I am actually kind of curious how it works in those cases. Um, because I imagine you can't actually sign off on that. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think you can just make that agreement on your own. You have to go through the network. Now, the biggest thing for me is just, like, it's very discouraging to your content creators. Uh, and obviously, I've created lots of like high quality content for games in the past, where it's like lots of time put into it. It isn't just a let's play. Uh, it's very highly edited and adjusted, and like it's not just straight gameplay. Uh, and it's very discouraging to people who put in the time for your games and help build your community and be a focal point for your community, and then you, they don't get the same cut they would get from another place, right? Right. And Pocket, I think, I think that wording that you use right there is a little, a little um, misrepresentative of, of the personalities because you use the word toxicity right like not all not everyone like i consider myself to be a content creator and i don't consider my community that i've cultured uh and, and kind of created around my channel to be toxic right um you could say it's toxic or positive um it really depends on that individual some guys they make troll videos right some guys make tutorials some folks make comedy videos some people make Right. Like, uh, of course, you run the risk of doing that, but you have to, I think, beforehand study what type of uh, a person you actually um, trying to run a campaign with. And and when I was doing that uh, at Edge of Reality, I was really, really focused on uh, the types of people that I felt like would would contribute to our game. Um, and not everyone on YouTube is toxic. Not everyone uh, is a bad person there. So I, I think that's kind of a. A misrepresentation uh and i and i'm not sure of the 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 point that you were you're trying to make like you know yeah sure you run the risk of that happening but not everybody's like that right so i think you have to do your due diligence beforehand um if you're trying to run one of those campaigns uh what's up parker Uh, I don't have anything else. I am going to link. Did I link the initial video? I'm going to link uh, Jim's. Jim just Jim makes it funny to me. PewDiePie's wasn't as funny. Jim Sterling is just hilarious. Very outspoken dude. Very outspoken. <laughs> it's an understatement. Uh, we could say it's going to be in history just so you guys can kind of I would like watch it later if you can just bookmark it it is a very good it is a very good listen here we go
Alright. <laughs> Alright, uh, where are we at? A future in episodic games. I'm reading that, and I'm... I'm not sure whether or not I should ban them or not. Because <laughs> I think that that's what I... If that's what I'm thinking, it's probably a ban worthy. Well, you're here. Uh, you made it this far. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. I really appreciate it. I think all of my brethren would appreciate it. Leave a like. Help spread the word. Subscribe if you've not already. And we have a lovely video right there. Check that on out.